Building out a solar system doesn't have to be crazy complicated. In fact, something like this can help make a solar system really easy to build out, whether you're trying to live off grid, maybe in a cabin somewhere down by the river, or you have an RV, or even you're just camping on the weekends or have an overlanding rig and something like that, and you're looking for ways to kind of get off the beaten path get off the grid and be able to harness the power of solar in order to take longer trips, power all of your electronics and keep things going. And maybe when you're getting into this world, you're like, you see all these things and it's just driving you absolutely mad. Different inverters and solar chargers and charge controllers and also just chargers in general to get a battery like a lithium battery charged, NPPT, SAE, it might as well be a language of its own. But using a solar generator can really make things so much easier because it's kind of like an all-in-one solution and it's a plug-and-play solution as well as long as you've got the right solar panels and the right voltage and amperage of your entire setup. But that's actually really simple even though it might sound kind of complicated to begin with and if you're not really adding a ton of solar panels then it's even more simple. And also if you're someone with not a lot of time and you don't want to dedicate months to learning about solar and then trying to build out a system or outsourcing that to someone else, which I would recommend, but it will come at a cost. So it's all about balance there. This is the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. I've talked about this one in multiple videos and I've been using it for a very long time now. I will say you do not need this particular one. This video is not sponsored and you don't need specifically EcoFlow. I do like their products because of the user interface and I found it to be reliable over the years, but you can use other brands like Bluetti, Jackery, Anchor. Uh, what's the other one? that's really popular. There's so many different brands. I just happen to like this one. One thing you do want to look for though is the battery chemistry because that I found can vary from brand to brand. And this was one of, I would say the first lithium iron phosphate batteries that was kind of in one of these solar generator forms. I'm not saying it was the first, I'm saying it was one of the first. Don't come for me in the comments. Um, and that was why I ended up buying this because the lithium iron phosphate batteries, while being a little bit more expensive and I believe a little heavier as well, they do last significantly longer. So that's kind of the benefit of those. Um, and I'm talking like thousands of cycles, I believe, before they're down to around 80% capacity and they'll still be usable but beyond that point. It's just that it wouldn't be as good as it was when it was new. So most of these solar generator power stations have a built-in inverter of various wattage. The higher the wattage, the more appliances and more powerful appliances that you can run with it. And this one has a 2400 watt inverter, but with the ability for a 4800 watt surge, which is pretty incredible. But what that's doing is inverting the power from the DC 12 volt lithium battery that's inside here. Man, I'm already getting in the weeds, aren't I? And then switching that to AC, kind of like the outlets that you have at home. And those are on the back here. I've got six AC ports. So that way you can plug in your everyday thing, like your camera electronics, um, I've actually used it to make smoothies on top of a mountain. But power stations like this also typically have a 12 volt port for your 12 volt appliances. For example, I have a small refrigerator cooler in the back of my Jeep that I run, I could run for days off of this battery because it's so low voltage. It is a compressor 12 volt refrigerator, so it does use very little energy. And depending on how many electronics you have, I think that 2000 watt hours is probably a good range to keep it in. So then how does solar come into this entire build out? And that's where the two XT60 ports in the back here come into play. And you could use, I mean, other systems have different ports to plug in solar. This uses two XT60 ports and you could get different adapters to adapt your solar panels to this as well. And here's the best part for your solar systems. These solar generators usually have a built in charge controller or MPPT device that'll regulate the solar energy so that you can successfully charge your battery. This one has two XT60 ports and I could charge it with up to 800 watts of solar panels, which I've not done so far. I have tried with two 400 watt panels on both of the ports and I reached about 700 watts was the highest I've gotten. But that is literally it. I just plug in those solar panels and it's good to go. The one caveat here is if you're mixing a different solar panels or if you're mixing things in series and parallel, you will have to keep in mind voltage and amperage 
as this does have most solar generators and power stations have specific regulations of how much wattage they can take in, volts and amperage. And when you start mixing solar panels around, it starts to get a little bit slightly more complicated and you'll have to do a few calculations. And so if you have multiple solar panels and you connect them in a series to each other, then it adds up all of the volts together from the sum of all of those solar panels versus if you put them in parallel, so not directly connected to each other, then you would be adding all of the amps, but the volts would stay the same. But pair something like this with two 400 watt solar briefcases or even something lower, and this would be absolutely golden. In addition to that as well, a lot of these brands have separate gas generators if you wanted to branch away from specifically solar and also add that extra backup layer in the mix as well. Now where these all-in-one solutions really shine as well has to be the user interface, especially of the EcoFlow device, because it shows exactly how much solar is coming in and how much power you are sending out. And that's just really helpful to see if you've got your solar panels angled in the right way and also if your entire system is actually working. Plus, when you plug a device in, it'll actually give you an estimation of how much time is left before the battery were to die if you kept that wattage. All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons of going with an all-in-one solution like a solar generator versus a you know more DIY or manually made a solar setup with all of the different components. And I've talked a bit about some of the pros already, but really, the best part about this is it's kind of a all-in-one solution. One, it's really easy to set up. It doesn't take very much. You're good to go when you get this thing out of the box. It's got different setups for DC. It's got an AC with an inverter. It's got a charge controller for your solar. It's got overload protection, fans to cool the entire device down, and of course the user interface on your phone that makes it really easy to monitor this entire situation. And one of the biggest benefits of having a all-in-one solution like this is the ability to pull it out at any point and charge it on the grid if for some reason maybe you're staying at a hotel or something and you wanted to charge it overnight in there. Um, situations like that is one of the best because if you've got a separate lithium battery in your specific built out solar system, I don't really think you're going to want to like pull apart all of the wiring and pull out a lithium battery. Well, it's just, it just really doesn't work that well. So what are some of the downsides of having an all-in-one solution versus building out one with, you know, all separate components? And that would be that all of your components are together. So this is one device. If something goes wrong, then you really have to send the entire unit into whichever manufacturer you were to choose, assuming you still had warranty. Otherwise, the whole thing might be kind of shot. Um, so having one thing all together, it's kind of a single point of failure, potentially. Another thing is, even though it probably is less heavy than all of the components that would weigh if they were separate, it is still really freaking heavy. I think this one's like 55, maybe 60 pounds. Actually, maybe it's lighter than that and I'm just losing a little bit of muscle, but that's besides the point. Also, these are pretty pricey, but I still believe that they are probably cheaper than if you were to build out your own solar array, depending on the components that you were to use. If you use like the cheapest stuff, then maybe that would be cheaper, but you know, four good components, um, this is actually a good bang for your buck. Another thing is, it's not as customizable as your own DIY setup. Maybe you want more solar, maybe you want more battery, maybe you want a greater inverter, things like that. You can't really change it, you can only upgrade the entire device. So that's an option, of course. You can also add batteries on if you were to expand the capacity, but it's not like a DIY setup where you can specifically pick out the components that fit your needs. Another negative, and this one has kind of affected me specifically, and I would say someone who's using this in an RV setup, is I have not found a way to avoid just using this as if it were shore power. In other words, I'm connecting my current trailer to this in a way that I'm connecting to the inverter, so I'm using the AC outlets, and so what that's doing is connecting to the trailer, converting AC to DC, and then to AC again. If you're using it in that setup, it's not the mo most efficient. You lose quite a bit of efficiency in those conversions coming from solar rather than just having direct 12 volt DC solar going straight to an RV or trailer battery, which is one of the main reasons that I am currently doing a DIY solar system inside my RV. But at the same time, 
I think that this works really well in tandem with that because of many of the reasons that I mentioned throughout this video, especially the portability of a device like this. But overall, I would say this is the perfect setup if you're looking for an easy solution all in one and you just need it to be reliable and it'll work when you need it to work with all of the components put together. Especially if you're a beginner and you don't want to overcomplicate your solar setup. But let me know down in the comments below, is this the easiest solar system setup or do you have any questions about what we talked about in this video? Let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you out there on the road.